Hello and welcome to the sixth round of the 2016 PCC Cup Series season here at Talladega. Taking his first career poll is Alex Phillips in the number 71. Johnson Racing has locked out three of the top four positions. Alina Lazareva is the only exception. Uh, Alina Lazareva and Nicholas Korodovos both received penalties after their antics at Road America. Uh, Alina Lazareva received a two-race suspended ban, meaning if she causes any more problems, she will receive a race ban. Uh, in that two race span of time and Nicholas Cordovos after having a, a uh, time penalty ass two time penalties assessed to him uh, lost the win at Road America and in addition received a 20 point penalty which hands the points lead back to Ike Durbin driving for Manicor Engineering now as we go further back through the field you'll notice a uh, few guys are definitely struggling here today uh, Lucas Motorsports could not find uh, the speed that they're traditionally used to having at these super speedways and uh, we actually just received word from uh, Stefan's Racing that Chris Benson starting in 29th there this is his last race in the 55 car citing a performance and sponsorship performance issues uh, with that team so uh, we'll follow that up later on as uh, looks like the Zach Tech Motorsports team and uh, Nice Cock Racing could never really get up to speed in qualifying and will basically lock out the last three rows here today. And now Alex Phillips leads the field to the green flag and away we go! Alex Phillips trying to fight off a hard charging Tom Wilson on the high side as these cars rocket up to 260 miles per hour. Looks like uh, Alino Zerva is giving Alex Phillips a push on the bottom there. There's Ike Durbin, Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer on the bottom. Uh, Louis Ballard, and as they fan out three wide on the back stretch, Alex Phillips gets pushed high by Alina Lazareva, and it looks like we're going to go three wide with Ike Durbin challenging on the bottom there. Alina Lazareva is going to take the lead. Uh, Alina Lazareva with some help from Nicholas Cordova is there on the bottom, but Griffith Motorsports cars are very strong here on the super speedways here today. Brian Gallagher is also in the top ten. Alina Lazareva starting to pull away from the field just a bit. She has a two race suspended ban. If she causes any problems within that time span, she is uh, going to be parked for a race or two, according to PCC Cup Series officials. Kurt Pliskin has a problem with his car. Fuel pump issues are going to take the number 24 out of the race very early on. Uh, tough break for Accelerator Motorsports. They've been struggling to have some kind of momentum uh, in the past couple races. All of the Nicecock Motorsports cars have lost the draft, as has Ryan Matthews in the 0-2. Uh, he had a strong run at New York Auto Ring, but it looks like he's really struggling here today. Kale Bernfart Jr., uh, living up to his father's expectations. Uh, Kale Bernfart Sr. won multiple races here at Daytona and Talladega back in the 90s, and he's doing his father proud by running in second place early on in a uh, Griffith Motorsports sandwich. Your new points leader, Ike Durbin, runs in sixth place following behind Gallagher. Uh, looks like there's Wilson up there, and uh, that's Barbara Burt in the 366. Uh, the Burt cars have been very strong here as well. Akio Gifu qualified in the top six, and Ike Durbin is dicing it up in the top ten as well. Uh, Tom Wilson, the championship caliber test driver, uh, formerly championship caliber test driver for Johnson Racing, takes over the lead, and he looks to be a bright young star here in the PCC Cup Series, holding off uh, Barbara Burt there on the inside. Oh, Burt's going to take a peek, uh, helped by Alex Phillips. And it seems like John the Johnson Racing cars have a stranglehold on the field as none of them are outside the top six right now. Chris Benson not doing his last run in this car any good. He is currently in 19th place. And uh, as you can see, that car is very bare. There's no sponsorship decals on that thing, and that is why they're booting him out of the ride. I guess they've got somebody who's got a little bit more sponsorship in mind. Oh, there goes Alina Lazareva up in smoke from the lead. Alina Lazareva lap number 14 is done. Done from the lead, and that is a very tough break for that team. They've been struggling all year, and Alina Lazareva is very far down in points. Your 2014 PCC Cup Series champion is done for the day from the lead. Akio Gifu now is in sixth place, and this is easily the best run for this team all season, up to fifth now. So the J the young Japanese driver is making a really good showing here, and this is something that we haven't really expected from that 466 car. Kale Bernfart Jr. back in the lead, uh, using the skills taught to him by his father. He is seeing the air 
and he can feel that car moving around in the draft. Nicholas Cordovo's now blows up, so Griffith Motorsports has some engine issues, some reliability issues in their cars, and he blew up in the middle of the pack, so that's going to hold up a bunch of people. Duncan Cobb trying to get around him, Hugo Hakai, Chris Benson, and he finally gets it to the apron, but that is two engine failures from Griffith Motorsports in 20 laps, so Brian Gallagher has his fingers crossed that his engine is going to last the rest of the race. Uh, looks like we've got some tire issues on the number 23 of John Jefferson. He is going to fall a lap down in the pits. Looks like Jerry Myatt's already going a lap down. Uh, he did not make a pit stop, but this is on lap 21. Cale Bernfart Jr. Uh, weaving his way through traffic and uh, is going to continue to hold the lead over Alex Phillips. Dan Ferre now brings his car into the pits. Uh, there have been reports of some fuel pickup issues on some of these uh, cars. Uh, Accelerator Motorsports, I guess, having faulty fuel pump issues on their cars today. Uh, we've got Barry Juvenile here, actually having a good run for once. He's up in the top 15. A little bit surprising that they're booting Chris Benson uh, instead of Barry Juvenile. Juvenile is, is last in points right now. This is the second pack of cars. Uh, Duncan Cobb is leading this group. Duncan Cobb running in 15th place. And uh, he's actually capitalizing on the momentum he had from Road America, where he got a second place finish. Tom Wilson is up in the lead, and we're about to get more lap traffic in the form of Ramsey Cockner, Daniel Sharp, and I believe that is Ryan Matthews up there. As Tom Wilson uh, holding the lead over Barbara Burt, and that's Akio Gifu up in second place, so a sterling run for that 466 car, he is in contention to win this thing early on. Uh, Ike Durbin now makes his way around Akugifu, and these lapped cars are causing a lot of problems. They are fanning out all over the place, blocking the top, blocking the middle, in some cases blocking the bottom, and they're gonna go four wide in the back there. That's uh, That was four wide for second place, and they're gonna get that sorted out. Four wide here is not really uh, the best thing that you want to do, but they managed to get that sorted out here. And Alex Phillips, the pole sitter, has been easily the strongest car all day. Go four wide again with Gallagher, uh, Durbin, looks like Preston Bell was there. And Duncan Cobb continues to run in the second pack. Uh, they haven't made up really any ground on the rest of the field. Actually, they've been losing ground. Oh, looks like we got a slow car in the back. That's Barney Ward. Uh, something gone wrong. Oh, he got hit by Joe Craig. That's going to be caution number one. And if it... Lucas Motorsports cannot catch a break here today as Scott Wollen also piles in in the number 16 car going on board. That's two of the three Lucas Motorsports cars eliminated early on. And uh, he just had nowhere to go. Barney Ward slid up in front of him. These cars uh, actually came into the pits before the caution came out. Uh, before they took the yellow flag and are going to try and uh, capitalize. And uh, on pit road, Brian Gallagher's car stalled in his pit stall and he would lose a lap getting that car refired. So Brian Gallagher, uh, I guess engine issues are plaguing him as well, but they did manage to get that fixed. Tom Delgado on his pit stop uh, managed to take the lead away from uh, Cale Bernfart Jr. and now leads the field. He is... Uh, quite a bit ways in the back of the pack because of all these cars that uh, pit before the yellow flag came out. So Tom Delgado is going to have to work his way through the field. But just a lap later, Tom Delgado would lose the lead to Alex Phillips, who makes a daring four-wide maneuver in the tri-oval to put Brian Gallagher, Candace Bowman, and Daniel Sharp back a lap down, and he is going to rocket forward, and uh, he's going to try and put Ryan Matthews a lap down here. Uh, Matthews doing some blocking, but he's going to move up high. That's Preston Bell in second place. He's come out of nowhere to run up in the top five. And Tom Delgado there on the inside looks like he might surrender the lead. Oh, James Hewitt going four wide with uh, po points rival Ike Durbin there. And that's Ian Elias on the outside. Ben Atkins, who surprisingly hasn't retired that car on the inside. Uh, ben Atkins is really had a miserable season, but his teammate James Hewitt is in is third in points, and he is having one hell of a season so far. He's moving up through the field. Chris Benson, his last run in the 55 is going to come to a merciful end as fuel pump issues sideline his number 55 Tonnerre. 
Mark Burt now. Uh, the third Burt car has moved up into the top five, and he has really, again, come out of nowhere to run up this far up in the field. This uh, caution, this last caution, really grouped together the field, and Mark Burt has been one of the best rookies uh, that we've seen in a while here in the PCC Cup Series. He runs third. Uh, another car that's actually benefited from this is the last of the Lucas Motorsports cars. This is Ben Worthington. He is running back in 21st place. Uh, just kind of hanging back and trying to see if he can be there at the end and let everyone else uh, wreck each other as they've been running pretty uh, pretty hard up near the front of the field. Here's Cale Bernfart Jr. Uh, going for the lead once again using the slingshot maneuver that his dad used multiple times in the 90s at Daytona and Talladega. Cale Bernfart Sr. Uh, won four in a row at Daytona and Talladega but he never did win the championship. Uh, back in the 90s, he was always a threat, but he never did win the championship. Let's see if Cale Bernfart Jr. can win one for his daddy. Uh, as uh, Louis Ballard, uh, another driver who's had a pretty miserable season thus far, is running up in the top 10, about halfway through this race, run lap number 47 of 88. And Gaspar D'Souza, unfortunately, is... Oh, he's slowing down. Gaspar D'Souza is... Uh, he wasn't having a great day. Uh, Paloma Autosports is uh, normally known to be decent on these tracks, but it's uh, kind of a far cry from Gaspar D'Souza's old team, Raptor Racing, who used to dominate on these super speedways. Tom Wilson uh, once again has taken over the lead. Uh, Brian Gallagher is trying to get his lap back back there, but it's a Johnson Racing 1-2-3 right now with, uh, with Wilson, Phillips, and Burnfart. Uh, locking out that uh, top three positions, so they will occupy all three steps on the podium right now if the race were to end right now. Uh, Duncan Cobb continuing to build on his strong momentum that he had at uh, Road America, and I believe he actually finished in the top five at New York Auto Ring, so Duncan Cobb proving himself to be a veteran uh, super speedway expert and is uh, hanging up in the top ten. Once again, three wide for the lead as it seems like uh, the Johnson Racing cars are just messing with everyone right now, proving just how much better they are than everyone. But it looks like we've got two Burt cars, uh, two double B cars right behind them, as that's Barbara Burt and Mark Burt uh, running on the bottom in the top five. As uh, Tom Wilson now coming up on more lap traffic, that's uh, Ramsey Cockner and Greg Woodard. Woodard's... Uh, not really had a great day. I don't know why he's so slow, uh, but Greg Woodard is now about to go a lap down too. It looks like he's holding up Cale Bernfart Jr. on the inside. He's going to move up high. He's going to block Tom Wilson. Woodard is all over the place here today. No wonder he's going a lap down. Woodard really has not had a good run here today. Honestly, something must be wrong with the handling on this 41 car because he is all over the place. He's blocking Louis Ballard now. He's been diving to the bottom. Oh, he just tried to cut off Louis Ballard. What is he doing? Uh, here comes Akio Gifu trying to put him a lap down. Akio Gifu fell back a little bit at Woodard. Woodard, there's a car below you. Oh, what are you doing? Caution number two on lap number 62 of 88, and that's going to take Akio Gifu. Greg Woodard, that's going to take Ramsey Cockner out of it. Going to go on board with Gifu and see what he saw. As. What was that? Did Woodard Spotter clear him low? Somebody on that team needs to be fired because that was ridiculous. You don't just pull low on somebody while you're going at 260 miles per hour. Going on board with Ben Atkins and yeah, Woodard just what was he doing? <laughs> going and uh, Ramsey Cockner for once. I mean, even though he was slow and kind of in the way, he was an innocent victim in all of this. And that's gonna take him out and. Uh, Unfortunate for Ramsey Cockner, his team needed good runs here today because they're quite struggling in the points as uh, Alex Phillips leads the field to the green flag. Cale Bernfart Jr. right behind him. Uh, don't have to worry about Brian Gallagher because he's a lap down, but Duncan Cobb continuing to run up in the top five, and Ben Worthington has come out of nowhere to run up in the top five. So Lucas Motorsports looking for one good run here today, and is that Barry Juveno up in the top five, or am I dreaming? Barry Juveno in the top five after running like garbage the whole season as Cale Bernfart Jr. takes the lead and uh, is going to hold that. Looks like we've got a couple cars diving into the pits as oh that's a big James Hewitt 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 what are you doing? 
What are you doing, lad? You just put Preston Bell on the wall. That's gonna take all of them out of the race. Candace Bowman got in it, and Hewitt just, he rocketed up through the field. He, what was he doing? He pushed up into Preston, he went up a lane and a half into Preston Bell. Are drivers, like, losing their mind at 260 miles per hour? Because this is dangerous. Going on board with Candace Bowman, who was collected in this, and she just had nowhere to go. Ian Elias is out of the race. And that was just... utter madness. I have no other way to put it. I'm sure that... Oh, Tom Wilson is coming into the pits. Uh, he hasn't taken the... He hasn't taken the caution yet. Is this a strategy play to try to get him up near the front? Oh, whatever it is, it didn't work, because no one pit under that caution. Uh, looks like Cale Bernfart Jr. is going to lead over Barry Juveno. And I never thought I'd say this, but Barry Juveno is... Eh, he's dropping back a little bit. Cale Bernfart Jr. has opened a four-tenth gap on the rest of the field. And uh, that's just ridiculous. Wow, oh, he's... Looks like he's signaling to come into the pits. Cale Bernfart Jr. has a problem in that number 51 car. Uh, pulling into the pits now, unless this is a strategy gamble, fuel pickup issue we're hearing from the 51 car. As, oh, four wide, that's not going to end well. Uh, looks like Lewis Jones, Sapphire Anderson, uh, Ike Durbin, your points leader involved, and Tom Delgado. Delgado went, oh, almost had more cars there. That was uh, the 34 and the 6 managing to weave their way through, and uh, that was close. Uh, Ike Durbin... Just an innocent victim in all this. Looked like Lewis Jones got into the back of Delgado, sent him into the infield, and uh, well, the rear end is toast on that two car, but they're keeping him out on track. I think they're going to try and finish the race with a busted up rear end as Tom Delgado gets a little bit of air going through the apron. Uh, something happened to Frank Azzaretto's rear end. We missed that, but he's still running pretty well going on board with Sapphire Anderson. And Anderson just just barely got clipped by your teammate there in the 81. He's going to slide across the finish line. And I believe that's the end of the day for the 05. It's Louis Ballard now because of Bernfart Jr.'s... Apparently there were fuel pickup issues on that 51 car. Uh, there's been a lot of problems with uh, fuel pickup uh, with this radical different uh, engine package that we've been running here this week. And uh, Ballard has not uh, fallen to that as he leads over Lenny Jacobs there in the 52 and uh, Barbara Burt in the 366. Now, Cale Bernfart Jr. still on the lead lap, but he is running way back in the pack. He's back in 20th place, and he's going to have to pick his way through the field uh, to get his way back to up towards the front. Hewitt is still on track as Barbara Burt takes the lead. Uh, with help from Lenny Jacobs and Ben Atkins has moved up into the top five. Uh, ben Atkins has really come out of nowhere to lead up in the top five here today. And it looks like we've got Kelly Blackwater up there too. That's a surprise. Uh, looks like kids might be eating free here today as Alex Phillips. Uh, looks like Tom Wilson's having another issue. His day has gone from bad to worse. As uh, Alex Phillips started near the back of the field, he pit under caution. And he has picked his way up through the field. He's up to sixth place now, trying to work on the high side of Gaspar D'Souza, who's a lap down. Frank Azzaretto, haven't talked about him much all day. He's got a busted rear end. I'm not sure where that happened, but he's still running up in 10th place. So, looks like a good run for ROG here today. As uh, Ben Atkins now going around Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer. That's actually for the lead. As uh, looks like Barbara Burt's going to go onto the inside. There's Lu Louis Ballard, but here comes Alex Phelps, easily the fastest car on track. Alex Phelps up to th uh, to fifth place now, but third on the inside line. Now second on the inside line as they go three wide for the lead. Ben Atkins on the high side, Barbara Burt on the inside, Louis Ballard on the bottom, and Louis Ballard's going to take the lead. But Alex Phelps is going to follow right behind him. Uh, Phelps going for the lead, but Ballard is going to throw the block here with just three laps to go. Yeah, we're nearing the end of this one here today as Alex Phillips is making a run for his uh, first ever win. Ballard has won a few back in 2011-2012, and uh, Alex Phillips is looking for his first ever win here today as we hit two to go. Two to go on the backstretch. Looks like he's going to peak low. Is Does he have the run? He has the run. Burnfart uh, is nowhere to be seen. 
Uh, but looks like he got help from Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer there on the inside. Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer drops back. And now it's between Phillips, Ballard, and Burt for the top spot. As it looked like uh, Wheat Farmer Jr. had to check up for something there. But looks like he's going to hang on here. Ballard drops back. So now it's between Burt and Phillips for the top spot going on the backstretch. Last chance for Burt to make a move here, but Phillips is holding the bottom. Phillips is holding the bottom coming out of three and four, although he keeps the bottom open here on the front stretch as he dives low. Phillips, Alex Phillips in the 71 car takes his first career win here at Talladega. Louis Ballard gets his best finish of the season in third place. Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer finishes in fourth. That's his second or third top five of the year. Lenny Jacobs gets fifth place. Ben Atkins with his best run of the year in sixth place. He finally gets a good run going in that number five car. Kids will eat free as Kelly Blackwater finishes in seventh place. Top ten uh, for that team and kids eat free and she got seventh. So uh, a lot of kids are going to be happy on Monday. Looks like Duncan Cobb got eighth place in that number 79 car. That is his third top ten of the year and his second in a row. Uh, Tom Delgado continues to run fairly well, and he gets a ninth place in that number three car from Manicor Engineering. Mark Burt gets a top ten, and uh, that's going to be good for his Rookie of the Year hopes, as Ben Worthington gets 11th. Frank Azzaretto dropped to 12th place, uh, but that's still a very good run for that 36 team. They've needed a good run all year. Kuga Hakai manages to get 13th. I don't think I mentioned him once all day, uh, but Kuga Hakai finishes a very respectable 13th. Andy Lambert, 14th. Cale Bernfart Jr. only managed to work his way up to 15th place. Uh, very, very bad run for him here. Uh, very unlucky on that uh, last caution. But he'll get him next time. Uh, Barry Juveno has, I believe, his best run of the season in 16th place. James Hewitt with a busted rear end, and Ike Durbin with a busted rear end finished 17th and 18th. Those were the last two cars on the lead lap. Brian Gallagher finishes in 19th, one lap down, and Gaspar D'Souza rounds out the top 20, also one lap down. Ike Durbin currently holds the top spot with 198 points, 12 over his nearest competitor, James Hewitt, in the number 155. He has had an excellent season so far. Brian Gallagher is third. Nicholas Cordovas has fallen from first. To fourth place in two races. Hopefully he can get uh, his feet underneath him and vault back towards the front. Gaspar D'Souza and Mark Bird are tied for fifth in the standings with 172 apiece. Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer is seventh. Uh, one back from him is Lenny Jacobs, and then we've got a tie for ninth between Kelly Blackwater and this week's winner, Alex Phillips. Tie for 11th between Tom Delgado and Barbara Burt. Two back from them is Sapphire Anderson in the number five car. Well, 0-5, but there is a V on the side of that car. Uh, Preston Bell is in 14th with 148. Duncan Cobb, 15th. Ian Elias is 16th. Josh Marshall, didn't talk about him all day. He was 17th. Uh, Zach Tech Motorsports teammates, uh, Ryan Matthews, and that is John Jefferson down there in 19th place. And rounding out the top 20 is the nice cock racing car of Daniel Sharp, who has been... Oddly impressive in that 169 car, even though that car is a piece of hot garbage. A quick look at the team points shows that Paloma Autosport has taken the points lead away from Griffith Motorsports, who is down to third place. Manicor Engineering is second, just two points behind Paloma. Clayson Enterprises, who two races ago was in the relegation zone, is now up to fourth place in team standings. Uh, TBA is in fifth place. Uh, Double B and Johnson Racing are tied for 6th, but B Double B gets it because they have a driver higher in points than Johnson. Australian Motorsports, ROG, Steffens, and Zach Tech round out the midfield, and the relegation spots now belong to Nicecock Racing, Accelerator Motorsports, and Lucas Motorsports, who all three had uh, pretty terrible runs all around uh, for their three cars.